Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people like you obtain optimum health by adopting a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle. I want to talk about a brand new paper that was published just last week in the Journal of the American Medical Association, or JAMA, Oncology Edition. It's titled, Association of Dietary Inflammatory Potential with Colorectal Cancer Risk in Men and Women, and it has some very interesting findings. In a nutshell, it emphasized the importance of inflammation in colorectal cancer development. It then went on to review the overwhelming evidence that diet modulates inflammation and thus may be a crucial modifiable factor in colorectal cancer prevention. Let's start by discussing colorectal cancer and its link with chronic inflammation. Colorectal cancer, as we know, it's the third most common cancer in men and women living in the United States today. We also know inflammation plays an important role in the development of many cancers, and colorectal cancer arguably has the largest, most well-studied, and most well-published association. For example, obesity, which is a state of low-grade chronic inflammation, has been associated with colorectal cancer risk. Chronic inflammation can also contribute to insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia, which are associated with colon cancer risk as well. In addition, chronic inflammation is very predominant in inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, which are also known to predispose individuals to, you guessed it, colorectal cancer. Lastly, there are several studies that show that the use of anti-inflammatory medications such as aspirin or ibuprofen can actually reduce the chances of colorectal cancer development. We know that chronic low-grade inflammation is detrimental to our overall health. What can we do to minimize this? Many studies demonstrate that diet, what you put in your mouth, influences inflammation. So, back to the paper that was just published. They used a well-published dietary inflammatory pattern score called EDIP score, E-D-I-P for short. That stands for Empirical Dietary Inflammatory Pattern. They then studied two well-known cohorts of people, one of men and one of women. The first cohort or population they looked at was the Nurses Health Study, which was comprised of 121,701 female nurses. The second cohort was the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, which is made up of 51,529 male health professionals. After excluding people that had reported any cancer and excluding other outliers, they ended up studying 121,050 participants. That's a pretty good number. These participants were given food frequency questionnaires and followed from 1976 and 1986 up until 2012. They then evaluated how these individuals ate and followed them throughout time to see if they developed colorectal cancer. So, how exactly did they rate their diets as far as how anti-inflammatory they were? Well, let's take a minute to talk about that EDIP score. This is a score that was created by studying 18 food groups food groups and determining how inflammatory they were. They determined inflammatory potential by seeing how much they elevated pro-inflammatory markers in your blood, like IL-6 or interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, and CRP. Here's the foods they looked at. Processed meat, red meat, organ meat, fish, leafy green vegetables, dark yellow vegetables, other vegetables, refined grains, high energy beverages like Coca-Cola, low energy beverages like Diet Coke, beer, wine, coffee, tea, fruit juice, and tomatoes. A past study determined the ranking of these foods on a spectrum from most inflammatory to least. Interestingly enough, they found these foods to be anti-inflammatory. Tea, coffee, beer, wine, dark vegetables comprising carrots, yellow squash, and sweet potatoes, green leafy vegetables, snacks, fruit juice, and pizza. They explain pizza as being anti-inflammatory because of the large amounts of tomato sauce, which is a good source of lycopene, and we know lycopene is anti-inflammatory. Pro-inflammatory foods, on the other hand, were processed meat, red meat, organ meat, fish, are you seeing a trend here? High and low energy beverages, such as sodas, refined grains, and some other vegetables. In regards to the present study looking at inflammation and colon cancer, they found that people consuming the most pro-inflammatory diets had a much higher incidence of colorectal cancer. In fact, after crunching all the numbers and running the statistical analysis, they found that men that ate the highest pro-inflammatory diet had a 44% higher risk of colorectal cancer compared to those eating the most anti-inflammatory diet. The women kind of showed the same thing, a 22% higher risk of colorectal cancer compared to those eating the most anti-inflammatory diet. 
Interestingly enough, they also found that people who ate the most pro-inflammatory diet reported lower physical activity, a higher body mass index, and they were more likely to have diabetes. They were also taking in a much lower intake of dietary fiber, dietary calcium, and whole grains. So in summary, this study highlights the fact that eating a pro-inflammatory diet will increase your risk of developing colorectal cancer. It strongly suggests that eating anti-inflammatory foods, such as leafy green vegetables, dark yellow vegetables, and avoiding sugary drinks, as well as meats and fish, will help improve your chances of living a long, healthy life without developing colorectal cancer. So there it is. Short answer. Eat more plants. Duh. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something valuable and applicable to your individual health journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please leave a message in the comments below about what you thought about our video. And let us know what videos you want us to do. Let us know what topics you want more information on. Until next time, aloha.